Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCA, and creator of the CCNA Writing and Switching Version 3 Complete Video Course. And in this video, you're going to learn a new topic on the CCNA exam. It's an architectural topic, it's a design topic. It's all about the collapsed core. How does that differ from the traditional three tier model? Stay tuned. The concepts of network architecture and design are huge in the Cisco world. In fact, the most prestigious Cisco certification that you can get is the Cisco Certified Architect Certification. That's above and beyond the CCA level certification. And there's a lot to it. There's a lot that goes into design, but we want to take a look at some basic design concepts in this video, taking a look at a couple of different types of architectures that we might run into within something like an office building like this. Let's zoom in on the network that might be inside of this office building. We're going to compare specifically a collapsed core network with a three-tier network. First of all, the three-tier network or the three-tier architecture is going to be a topology divided up into three areas. The access, the distribution, and the core layers. And we want to talk about each of those. First of all, let's focus on the access layer. Notice down at the access layer, we have what are probably layer two ethernet switches. Layer two meaning that we're not doing any routing. These devices are making forwarding decisions based on MAC address information. We've got these devices like laptops, maybe printers, maybe other ethernet devices, maybe IP phones connected into these ethernet switches at the access layer. This is how we're getting from our cubicle or from our office, we're plugging into the wall jack and we're getting back to the wiring closet at this layer. This is where these ethernet switches live. However, we need to send traffic maybe from one switch to another switch. Maybe there's a server connected to one switch and we're trying to reach that server. How do we do that? Well, we probably don't want to have a full mesh of interconnections between all of our switches because that would be a lot of interconnections. What do we do instead? We use, or we can use, this three-tier architecture where our access layer switches connect up to distribution layer devices. And the icon I have there, that's still a switch, but it's a multi-layer switch. In other words, it's capable of doing routing. It's a very fast switch. It has a high capacity, typically. It's going to be able to handle a fairly decent network load. And it's probably going to have some high-speed ports on it. And some literature calls the distribution layer a building distribution layer because maybe we have on a campus where we have multiple office buildings in close proximity, maybe we have a building distribution layer in every building, but then we want to interconnect the buildings. Well, we could do that up at the core layer. That's the job of the core layer to get traffic as quickly as possible from one distribution layer switch to another distribution layer switch, moving packets as quickly as possible. But also the core layer is our gateway out to the rest of the world. We're going to go out to the internet possibly, or maybe to some remote site through the core layer. We're going to connect in this case, I'm connecting to a couple of firewall enabled routers. And these routers are connecting out maybe to different service providers and those service providers get us out to the internet. By the way, back at the core layer, notice that there's sort of an oval surrounding a couple of links interconnecting those switches. Again, these are multi-layer switches. When we see links with an oval around them like this, that's called an ether channel. We're going to be talking about that later on in the course, but here's the high level overview of that. An ether channel allows us to have more throughput between a couple of switches by aggregating multiple physical connections. Maybe these are 10 gig connections at the core layer and we have two of these 10 gig connections. We could bundle those in an ether channel so that logically it looks like one interface, one 20 gig interface that's going to allow us to send traffic very, very rapidly between these core layer devices. And remember in some of our prior videos, we talked about different types of topologies. We talked about a star topology and a full mesh and a partial mesh. If we zoom in on different areas of this architecture, we can really see that we've got multiple types of topologies inside of this architecture. We have, for example, down at the access layer, a star topology. Would you agree with that? We've got that centralized device, the ethernet switch, and radiating out from that centralized device, we've got our end stations, we've got uplinks to other switches, but there at the access layer, if we just focus in on that, that's a star topology. But if we look at the core and distribution layers, you'll notice that we've got some redundant connections, that's great, but it's not a full mesh. 
There's not a connection between those two distribution layer switches directly. I would look at those two layers and say, that's really a partial mesh topology. Do you see that in this three-tier architecture, we really have components of a star topology and a partial mesh topology? This leads us to another term I want you to know, and that's a hybrid topology. A hybrid topology, that's a network topology that contains elements of multiple topology types. In this case, we've got an element of a star topology and we've got an element of a partial mesh topology. However, some networks, they're simply not large enough to justify all these multi-layer switches. Maybe we don't need a core layer and a distribution layer. There is another approach called a collapsed core architecture. Let's see what that would look like. If we take the distribution layer and we combine it with the core, what we end up with is a collapsed core layer. We still have redundant interconnections between our axis layer switches, but we've eliminated a layer. Now, this might not work well for a large campus where we have lots and lots of buildings that we want to interconnect, but for some installations, maybe within a single building or maybe just a couple of buildings, this might be a great solution. And again, this is called the collapsed core architecture, and this is a two-tier topology. And the two tiers are made up of the axis layer and the combined core layer and distribution layer. They've been consolidated into this collapsed core layer. If you want to learn even more about Cisco routing and switching technologies, just click the link in the description or on the right side of the screen, and I'll send you more training videos. And also, if you don't want to miss any of my YouTube videos, be sure and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.